Let's see if I can't get this started. Do that in a second. Just got to get audio set up. That could be worse. Yeah. And hopefully this will work. First I just got it. Roger. Your mic sounds weird, so it must be do so it must be we're on. <laughs> yeah. Still using uh setup where I'm speaking through my phone. I'm hoping to kind of make that better in the future. Well, got start somewhere. Yeah. I think mostly the issue is that I'm speaking through a, a Bluetooth mic, and I know that wired ones can do a whole lot better. Yeah. Hey, is your stream on? Because it doesn't look like it. My... Oh, well, my software says it is. Well, I'm looking. It says recent broadcast three minutes ago, and nothing's playing. That's it just strange. says, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh, I, I got the thing wrong. Uh... Uh -huh. I forgot to set it back to the... There Open we go. Yeah. Now I found you. Yeah. Also, yes, I can hear it. Excellent. Actually, it sounded better than last time. Huh. Well, that's good. Yeah, I actually have to turn down the volume. <laughs> God, that song is... It's so catchy. So, I can't tell if it's the Brental Floss is uh, with lyrics cover. Do you remember that? I have not. Um, since um, it was never really a thing I was into, I never really have looked into that sort of remix. You know, it was, you know, Banjo-Kazooie theme with lyrics. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm getting that. I'm just saying, like, because I never played Banjo Kazooie, never really thought to kind of look out that kind of thing. Oh, that's fair. Just to make sure my stuff is still in place. Also, it's still stuck on the stream for Banjo Kazooie starting. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I would know how this stuff works by now. And also, thank you, friend, man. Hopefully I can do that, yeah. Because I do hope to get all the ones in the levels, at least. Yeah, Are seven you actually ten. trying to win percent this entire game? 
I, I don't think I'm gonna try to 100% everything in Gruntilda's lair, but, like, I want to do everything within the level, at least. You know, you really should start working on a notebook at this point of, like, gaming wins, or put it in a Google Doc. Yeah, it ain't really my kind of thing. I don't know, I mean, it'd be nice to look back on everything. And I'd say, you know, reading the game is one entry, one percenting is two entries. <laughs> now, I don't think I'll be 100%, like, like I said, I'm not, not really thinking of going all the way through the lair, but... Yeah, no worries. Right, this is for the, the the puzzle thing, not the actual going into the level itself. Oh well, at least like this remix of the Gruntilla's Lair theme. Remember when I was a kid, I would always come back here just to listen to it because, well, I never got far enough to unlock it. Mm -hmm. Now, considering how tough it was to kind of get into the position of unlocking all the stuff, I can kind of understand why. It, it was the Monster Mansion. I couldn't get past that. Because mm. uh, I was a scared little kid. Yeah, it's it's something I could have seen that would have helped me back as a kid as well. And looking at that comment there, Frank, oh the clock hood is... I just... Hmm? Oh my god. I, I just had a memory and and you are going to hate me for this mm -hmm. like because i know you're a big fan of this but uh i remember a, i rented a game and i literally couldn't get past the first level because i was too scared mm -hmm. it, it was mega man 64 which was of course the port of mega man legend it was that first level the, there was darkness ahead. I couldn't get past it because I was too scared. And <laughs> I hate myself for that because that's really stupid. I mean, I honestly don't blame you for that. I remember when I played through the, the intro level to that, like, I found some of the sound effects and stuff scary as well. I mean, Legend of Zelda at least has a little more going about it as to why you wouldn't go ahead. Go <laughs> but yeah. Mm. Ugh, but I, I just feel... It's like one of my biggest gaming shames, I admit. I mean, there are just certain things that really do get to us as kids. Yeah. And it probably, like, I mean, you also gotta keep in mind, like, this was a time when, like, we were still getting used to 3D environments, and... Yeah. And, like, sometimes all you need is shadows to be scary. Yep. Oops. Yeah. Thanks for understanding, Brahman. <laughs> Funny thing is, is like looking at like reviews that will talk about how it's like, yeah, you can really honestly beat a lot of stuff in that game just with basic circle strafing. <laughs> but it's like, you know, when when you're yeah, running into but... that stuff for the first time, it's like, holy frick, it's intimidating. Yeah, except there's one problem with the whole circle strafing thing. Mm -hmm. Uh Mega Man Legend was first made on a controller that didn't have dual shot. You didn't have circle strafing. True. Actually, I think maybe Mega Man 64 did 
add that in because of the different controller stick? I, well, from I, I played a little bit of both the PS1 and the N64 version. I know that in the PS1 version, the the shoulder buttons were your strafing. Yeah. One, so you could do it. Like it's a bit rough by yeah. modern standards, but like you could still do it. Yeah, it's definitely a game that I honestly, if they were to port it, but give us modern controls, I thought the game would sell like hotcakes. Like, L Legends is kind of one of those games that like I, I speak authoritatively, but I I, I haven't played too much of it, but like. I played enough to know that part of the issue with Mega Man Legends 64, whatever you want to call it, is it's kind of a game of its time. Which is to say, it's like, it's when they were still trying to figure out how to do stuff in 3D. Exactly. It's a product of its time, and, well, early polygonal 3D games always are the rough ones. The only one that seemed to get it right the first time was Mario 64, but... Even with that, the camera was kind of awkward. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, for its time, it was pretty good, but... It's one of those things that if the N64 controller wasn't for the proper tool stock, like, if they actually figured out that, hey, tool stock controller is where it's at... Yeah. That would be a different story, right? For sure. It, it's like... That's kind of the funny thing I find about the Nintendo 64 controller, though, is that, um... I'd say it was pretty good for the, the era it was designed in. Like, obviously in hindsight, like, I mean, there's a reason that, like, the Xbox 360 controller is considered the default, you know, gamepad configuration. But when you think about it... When you think about it, the, the Nintendo 64 controller kind of makes sense in that it's like, okay... We only anticipate the need for this one analog stick, and the C buttons can either function as camera buttons, or they can also operate as additional face buttons for games that don't need that. Yeah. Anyway, hey, Argle. Hey. Yeah, you know, we're just talking nostalgia, mm -hmm. but what else is new, right? Well, not nostalgia, that's for sure. Almost by its very wow. definition. Exactly! And yeah, that's right, Fryman. That's the reason why most PC gamers use Windows. Because Microsoft's uh, 360 controller fits right in perfectly. And uh, not only that, it's also that um, both Mac and Unix don't have as much support. Like, Mac? Mac, of course, has more support than, like, Linux, Unix, whatever you call it, but... What I can tell, Linux users are kind of in a cult. Kind of creepy. Yeah, like, people are like, oh yeah, li like, Linux is the best because of all these reasons, and it's like, yeah, except for, like, when it actually comes to, you know, programs that need support. <laughs> yeah. The reason why Mac and Windows work so well is because the adaptability of support. Like, Windows works with just about everything. Mac, well, hey, it does what you need. And even more better than Windows in some aspects. Yeah, because it's like... Yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember when it came... Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I remember when it came to, um, when I was in school, I remember that, like, pretty much every single, like, uh, art program was being used on a Mac. And that's kind of because, yeah. well, on honestly, like, a Mac is pretty good for, you know, a lot of visual design type stuff. Whether it's, like, yeah. you know, art or video editing and... Okay, yeah, Linux is best only if you have the skills to optimize everything by yourself. Yeah, Linux yeah. is the DIY operating system. Yeah, I, I would go so far as to say, it's like, it, it's good for the computer hobbyist. Oh, definitely. Well, look at the bright side. I'd say Linux, if Linux users are a cult, well, Temple OS is a religion. Literally. 
So the way the way I see I kind of see it is it's like Mac is for your like your editing your like video kind of stuff that it's really good as like an editor's uh, pro, um, hardware. Microsoft well, Windows is probably better for like software development and gaming. Not for and gaming, games. yeah. Yeah, I think kind of that ties into kind of the nature of the hardware as well, because you're more likely to find a Mac on, well, you're going to find Mac OS on a Mac. Yeah. Whereas Windows, because of how much more variable it is and how, you know, you can be like, oh yeah, you can upgrade to the latest graphics card real easy and all that, it's... Yeah. I'm not even joking about Temple OS. There's a video on it. It is crazy. Yeah, I remember seeing the uh, Down the Rabbit Hole video on that. Yeah, I know. Freaking insane. So, I've been uh, re-watching Gravity Falls. Still holds up after all these years. How long ago did Gravity Falls come out? Like, 2012? Bullshit, that, that can't be more than like, five? Because that's, like, I mean, I, I know it's kind of gone through its run and all that, but, like, that seems like that came out not too long ago. Uh, well, actually, it, it has, when I said it's almost a decade, I'm not even joking. It started on the premiere June 15, 2012. Yep. And it ran until 20, February 2016. I remember because, um... There was a huge, uh, there was a huge storm that had taken out power in like, I think it was 2013, 2014, and um, while we were out of power, I was using my phone and I was watching um, uh, Gravity Falls. Yeah, I'm just gonna shrivel up and die right now. <laughs> Huh. Oh, dang. Are you fucking kidding me? What? July 14, 2017. First revealed that he and Disney talked about making a Gravity Falls film. Disney ultimately passed the project. The studio felt the show wasn't big enough to warrant the film. Are you fucking kidding me? I feel like there's a Disney executive out there who needs to get their kneecaps, you know, taken out with a, with a copper red. Or a cop, or a lead pipe. Yeah, that's a, a lead pipe. Although in 2021, he did express the story, that uh, interest in the story character video game. Point and click adventure mystery game? Actually, at that point, maybe just do Gravity Falls, but, you know, Professor Layton game. That actually would fit. See, I know I need to get all the acorns for the squirrel, and I need to get all the gingos. Oh. 
So, Melina almost died again today. I thought you stopped playing her! What? I thought you switched characters because of this situation. No. You're, no. you're probably thinking of Megara, huh, Bran. Yeah. Oh, right. And that was... Yeah, so, okay. No, this is, this is also a different campaign. This is Strength of Thousands. Ah. Um, so basically it's like, uh... The group is like, asked by one of the teachers, Hey, uh, so... You know, there's these... People have been uh, telling me about, um... You know, an increase in bug activity, so... I'm recruiting you guys to help uh, track down and collect me some samples of these bugs. And we got attacked by a centipede swarm. Oh. Swarm. Uh, Melina, Melina got bit in the first round. And then, you know, the rest of the combat, she did not get touched. Except, centipedes have venom. So, I could not yes. shake... I could not shake the venom, and it your got to the point. So, your character has brushed with death so many times. You need to start high fiving him. Yeah, well, that that would that would be not death. That's a that would be a psychopomp, and there are multiple psychopomps. But um, yeah, it got to the it got to the it got to the point that like. You know, she she dragon breathed the swarm, did mass amount of damage, and then finished them off the next round with uh, electric arc. So she definitely got her revenge. But then, like, even with with an anti venom, uh, it only gives you a bonus to your fort save. And I kept on failing the fort save. The one time that I actually got a roll that would have succeeded was fucked up by one of the teammates who got a critical failure on their treat poison. And when you critical fail treat poison, it gives a penalty to the next fortitude roll. <laughs> nice job breaking it, hero. <laughs> it got to the point where, like, so yeah, he got the, he failed, he got the critical failure, I'm just like, STOP TRYING TO HELP ME, <laughs> YOU'RE DOING WORSE! <laughs> and this is, this is why I'm going to call that, um, uh, Grady's character is most likely to die before reaching level 2. Wait, why? Because just at low levels, uh, low levels are much more lethal than you expect. And he isn't exactly, uh, doesn't exactly have the AC to stand, withstand, like, a hit, so... D Are did I see right that his dex is only a plus one? Yeah. For a kobold. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. I'm sorry, what? He's got he's got a total AC of 15. And only one of that AC 
is uh comes from his decks. I I think I uh, yeah, I definitely have a better range C than him. And I'm the range sniper. I mean I suppose the idea with him is that he uh stands back and throws things that go boom. Yeah, but, you know, that doesn't protect you from range attacks. <laughs> True. Well, if he dies, well... We'll give him a Viking burial. <laughs> because well, we it's totally not a burial, that's... Board. Diamond dust to bring him back. Yeah, you're not gonna get di- Well, let's see. I was just making a joke on that because it's not that I want to give him a proper feel, so we can't afford it. <laughs> Actually, I'm just like, thinking about that. The mo apparently, when it comes to D and D fifth edition, the most evil thing a GM can do is counterspell revivify. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, from what I remember with 2E, uh, there are two main, well, there are three main ways of, uh, bringing people back. Um, Breath of Life, which is a, it has to be cast within, like, uh, a minute of their death. It's not really a resurrect, it's a... Oh, they've failed their saving throws, but I, you know, it's basically, um, using frickin' shock paddles. <laughs> yeah. Um, then there is Resurrect, which is a 7th level ritual, which means it takes a day to cast, and you have to have, like, multiple people casting it with you. You gotta have them start going with Uga Jaka over yeah. and over. The thing. You can't stop the feeling. And then there is Revival, which is a 10th level spell. So... Yeah, that's, that's super Revival, yeah. Yeah, Resurrecting in 2E is... difficult. Hello, coming back to the sounds of, like, David Hasselhoff singing, I got a feeling. That's, 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 that's a good resurrection ritual. So, let's see. Or hooked on a feeling, that's it, yeah. Okay, so yes, Breath of Life, spell level 5. Uh, trigger, a living creature within range would die. Okay, so, no, it's not even that they, uh... They are dead for a minute. It's it has to be cast the moment they would otherwise die. In other words, you got one round to revive the fuck. It's I a reaction, know. not even one round. It's. <laughs> oh god. So if you if you've spent your reaction on something else and then they die, that's it. God, that, that's horrible. Yeah, Revivify is slightly better. It's a third level touch spell. And All you right. touch a creature that's in the last minute. And they come back with one hit point. Ooh, yeah. There's also Reincarnate, which is a fun one. What? Reincarnate. Reincarnate is much lower level. It's only Ritual level 3. But of course, you're bringing them back as a, like, there's a whole list of what they might come back as. Yeah, at that point, you might have to make a new char player character, right? Not really. I mean, I guess it could be fun. Uh, okay, so that's technically the fourth way to bring them back. The fifth way is create undead. I mean, you technically brought them back. 
They're up and walking. I I'm just imagining with the reincarnate, it's just like the baby comes out. Well, time to speed run becoming, uh, becoming an adventurer. <laughs> well, no, so it it brings them back. Like, they don't have to go through birth or anything like that. It, it brings them back on the spot. It just, it changes what they are. Ah. Yeah, you, actually, so a critical success, you reincarnate the target into a new adult body. Uh, okay, yeah, no. If you critical fail, the target's soul becomes trapped in an unintelligent animal creature of the GM's choosing. Oh, uh, no, it gives the a GM the choice. Oh, no. Oh, no. That, that, that is something that feels equally possible to be hilarious as it is to just be the worst thing ever. <laughs> Which, technically, okay, yeah, that might be a bad thing, because it's like they have an intelligence score of one. Uh, but then you could have someone actually cast Awakening on them, which means that they would uh, become an intelligent animal. I think uh, when they said an unintelligent animal, I think they referred to like something that's not magical, like a base animal. Like, I think yeah. they... Have the right, I don't, yes, I, what you, that, what you're saying doesn't matter. It's awakening, a uh, awakened animal is used to turn normal animals into, um, give them intelligence. Oh, I see. Sorry, I'm having a... Yeah. <sighs> I I hope one day they actually make a an ancestry that is the awakened animal ancestry. You want to make Tony Tony Chopper, don't you? No, I want to play. I want to play my cat. I would you know, remember Tony remember Tony that, that that cat I uh, introduced once. Basically, a high level wizard, but they're just a normal cat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, I get. Okay, I think I know what Clash Chopper is. He's a barbarian who has a lot of healing specialties. Wait, who, what's this? I'm thinking Chopper from One Piece. No, no, Chopper. Chopper would be. Okay, if you if you're going in terms of like. Pathfinder in general, he's a shifter. Uh, Pathfinder 2, he is um, a beastkin. Right, right, right. I forgot about shifter. Right. He's probably got a. Yeah, probably beastkin monk. Ooh, I like that. I mean, he does have karate form. Yeah. Because he doesn't exactly enrage, so Barbarian doesn't really well, work too much. Well, except that one time when, you know, he ate too many of them Rumble Balls. Yeah. Like, that's like the one form he still has trouble with. Okay, if you could have any Devil Fruit, what would you want? I think you've asked this before. I might have, but it was years. And I... Well... I would want the... Uh... You're having a hard time picking, aren't you? Nah, nah, I'm trying to remember what the exact name of it is. So yeah, I'd want the Hito Hito no Mi. The flame flame fruit? <laughs> but, Dude, you know, you're I... Australia. That might be the worst fruit to have. What do you mean? 
You'll be literally made of fire. That's not what now. That's not what it does. <laughs> no, isn't the flame? Doesn't the flame flying fruit turn you into a nope. fireman? That's not. That's not the flame flame fruit. Okay, which one is this then? <laughs> uh. Okay, no, fine. I'll, I'll give you the full name. The full name is the Hito Hito no Mi Model Nika. Oh, the cat cat fruit. No, no. No, my brain is hurting. <laughs> I'm sorry. Neko is cat. Nika. Oh. And I, I, I should probably not continue. I mean, I guess it's only you unless. Yeah. Uh, uh, sir. Hey. It is. Uh, it is a fruit that whoever the the user of that fruit gains the powers of the sun god Nika. Oh. It's not Oh, 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 okay, now I'm remembering. Yeah, yeah. It's that fruit, the special <laughs> fruit. Yes. Okay, no mythical zone fruit. <laughs> no mythical <laughs> feeding. Otherwise, I could say I want Marco's goes Phoenix Phoenix fruit. <laughs> That's ha ha cheating. Ha has Argo done the equivalent of picking an Uber for his Pokemon competitive team? Yeah, he did. <laughs> it, it, okay, there are like... Okay, so we know there's like two Mythic Zone fruits, and I know there's like that one guy, pirate who has like an ancient zone fruit where he turns into like an Allosaurus, which, let's be honest, is pretty badass. Oh, why? That, that is a fruit. That is tempting. I would say I do like the horo horo no me. You know, turning yourself, being able to turn into a ghost, send that little ghost people around. Yeah. And I'm super depressed. I can make other people feel depressed. <laughs> I didn't laugh that. I, I always will laugh how she might have actually been the Straw Hat's greatest threat. And Usopp's just the one who no sells it. Yeah, because I'm already depressed. <laughs> I freaking love that. And, and that reaction of hers when it is not working. Oda is the master of surprise expressions. <laughs> Although I still think the one with the freaking thunder lightning god. Yeah. <laughs> really? You can't shock Luffy. <laughs> oh. So Oda Oda's gonna have to explain how that works now, since uh you know what we know about Luffy has changed. <laughs> oh boy. Cause the okay, the explanation is is that uh at least this is the fan theory. Is that um uh okay, you know hold on. Huh? Andrew, do you mind any I do not give a shit about One Piece spoilers. <laughs> yeah. The gum gum fruit is not actually the gum gum fruit. It's the mythic zone fruit. Basically you know, you know Luffy has the power of a of the sun god Nika. Um, and apparently the power that comes with it is, uh, he's got cartoon powers. Like, he's, he's, he's now powered by Toon Force. Oh yeah, I think I remember hearing Toon about Force. that now. Yeah. Toon Force or Toon Logic. The explanation for why, uh, he, he had the properties of rubber against, uh, 
uh, that buddy Thunder God is because the first thing that he was told was Luffy, you just ate the gum gum fruit. Now you are a rubber man. So now, Lu because Luffy believes that, that's why his god powers uh, make him rubber. So it functions on orc weird boy logic. <laughs> yes, yeah. basically. <laughs> There is also the idea that he's supposed to be the fruit is the fruit that counters other fruit. In the same way of like uh, you know, the dark dark fruit counters other fruit. Only that one saps power, whereas Luffy sort of reflects it, deflects. Yeah. So, and rubber is kind of the best way to abstract it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Oda has an explanation. I'm pretty damn sure Oda planned this from the goddamn beginning, that mad lad. Yes and no. There are... There are things where it's like, okay, no, I probably didn't, but... I mean, okay, he probably he probably had the plan that yes, it was, uh, that yeah, maybe it was going to be like this final power up thing, but it's hard to tell. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things where Oda has a lot of explanation, and Oda has announced on June twenty fourth. Uh, One Piece will be entering its final stages. I'm sorry. What? Yep, there is only a couple of arcs left. It's Act 3. Holy shit. Well, I guess ending it with him fighting a goddamn dragon and revealing, Oh, my power is a god in cartoons! What a hell of a way to end... Part two. For real though, Oda really is a bit of a mad lad at times. Actually, if I were to pick a fruit that I... Okay, say we're playing a tabletop game, you know, a Pathfinder, and you let us have any fruit within reason, I would probably go with the Tweet Tweet Fruit Falcon model. You know, that one guy. Hey, uh, I'm back, I'm back, sorry about that. Um, so, no, it's okay. So, here's how it's probably going to go. The last few arcs is going to be, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, freaking Laugh... Laugh Tale? Yeah. Um, then there's going to be the War of the... Uh, the Throne War. And of course... Yeah, you, know, you gotta do... And of course, dealing with the government. Which should... That would probably be the Throne War. Yeah. So... I like to imagine for, for Laftail, his opponent's gonna be Shanks, but it's gonna be sort of in a friendly, my best against your best kind of fight. I... I think here's what's going to happen. This is what I want to see. Um, so, the they end up deciding it's like it's going to be uh, Shanks and his like crew and alliance, Luffy and his alliance, um, the Buggy Alliance, uh, Blackbeard and his alliance, if he has an alliance, and then maybe like. They, they're all gonna go in and have a Davy Bat Games as to determine who's gonna win. And the Blackbeard crew are gonna be cheating assholes. Oh god, definitely. <laughs> oh, you know what would be the best thing? Foxy and his crew are the ones who are doing the announcement and setting this whole thing up. Like, they're, they're the third party who's, like, overseeing this. And then the government will probably, uh... Yeah. And you know what? Toby 
Yep, Kobe get B and Helpo Emo are gonna be part of the the fight. Like they're just they're infiltrating, they're disguising some other people, but they get in and having fun. Yeah. I don't know, maybe that lazy, maybe that lazy, uh, you know, nice guy also shows up for some reason. Uh, yes, he... I don't know, just throw everybody in. <laughs> and you know what, I'm pretty sure, I've said before I said again, I think I follow the theory that, uh, the thing that Lucy told his, uh, his brother, the same thing that, uh, that Roger told his friend what he's gonna do once he becomes King of the Pirates. He's gonna hold a big party for everybody. Cause, yeah. Cause that would totally elicit the reaction of, wow, you serious? And that's totally a Luffy and Roger thing to say, right? Yeah. I'm gonna have a big party and I'm gonna invite everybody. Huh. <sighs> So maybe unite the world with laughter? Yeah. So. Meanwhile. Actually, a Davy back fight really would feel more in line with One Piece. Like, they could have a fight the world government and make it the super serious. The stakes are high. But for somebody with, like, him and Shanks, I feel like maybe... Shanks is all looking serious, Luffy's looking all serious, they all walk across a field to each other, and then Luffy just pulls out a coin and it's like, you ever heard of a Davy back fight? <laughs> I mean, what? there is there is one thing though, that like, I'll say this and then we should probably change the topic just then, because Andrew just... <laughs> but um, so, uh, yeah, Shanks' crew, like, Shanks and Luffy, they're, of course, they're... they're basically family so of course they're gonna get along and they're gonna uh do something silly and stupid uh shanks crew on the other hand is probably extremely pissed at luffy's alliance because of um uh oh, what's his name the dude with the barrier barrier fruit um oh, oh yeah that he met in <laughs> Yeah. It's like the arena, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know you're so he he is he is part of Luffy's crew because he is basically a big simp for Luffy. Um to the point where it's almost creepy. Yeah. He He declared he declared war on uh the Shanks Pirates. Ooh. And because Luffy never publicly said, no, I'm not with him. That's a problem. He, yeah, uh, he is part of the Alliance. He's part of the Straw Hat Alliance. So, <laughs> yeah. So, it's... I mean, I'm Shanks... Sure Shanks doesn't feel anything about that, but... No. Uh, but his crew. <laughs> yeah, because Shanks is the kind of guy who would laugh it off and be like, oh, the cheek on this guy. You know. Let's just give him a drink and, I don't know, maybe scare the hell out of him. I mean, clearly yeah. want him to. Yeah. Although, I still want to see a sniper fight between Ustop and his father. Yeah. I want to at least see that. Also, his father's a dick! Leaving his, leaving his wife and kid to go with family. What an asshole. Yeah, it's gonna get really awkward when it's like, hey, how's, how's your mom? Oh, she's dead. What? <laughs> uh, I don't remember what they did in the four kids dub to get around that, so. I'm gonna look that up. <laughs> Uh, so... Alright, moving on, yeah. I... I continue to watch, uh... To watch frickin' classic Gundam, Gundam 79. There's a still... show... There's shows I do need to get into, yeah. It's, uh, it's still hard for me to get into it because of the art style. Well, the, the quality of the art, I should say. 
And it doesn't help that it's harder to get, find good quality old oh, It's not that, it's like, Crunchyroll has, you know, good quality, it's just the fact that it, it is, is of its age. Of how, yeah. Like, but you can clearly dying. see all the dust specks in each bloody cell. I kind of like that drum, but I see where you're coming from. I like the aesthetic, but yeah, having to see it all the time would get a little plated. There's, there's, there's a bit of total whiplash in one episode where it's like frickin' Amaru uh, learns that this woman, she's like, it's like, I, I'm going to, like, I want my revenge on you because you killed my husband. And then she commits suicide, which, you know, emotional damage. <laughs> emotional damage. Uh, so this drives Amaro, he, Amaro basically starts to realize, like, like, holy shit, like, I am actually killing people, like, Oh yeah, I'm in a goddamn war! <laughs> yeah. And so... I just put people out in space to die and people So yeah, it's like the first half... The first half of this episode, he's like super depressed and like refusing to get into the body Gundam. Uh... I'm a get in the robot. Basically. And then... Uh, later on when, like, he goes, he visits his mother, um, kills another person, and then freaks out and tries to kill another one because it's like, he's hiding, it's like, you know, he's hiding in the bed, uh, and there's the young forces and he doesn't want, you know, the civilians to get involved or whatever. But of course, they, they insist on trying to find out, like, who, who is this person under these sheets? And so, yeah, he shoots one of them, the other guy starts to run away, and he's just sitting there in the doorway, but he's just firing wildly at this guy as he's running away, just... I'm like, damn, he's like going full-on freaking PTSD! <laughs> and then five minutes later, uh, one of the other people are like, Hey, Amaro, you're gonna, we're gonna try out this new, uh, technique. Uh, it's like a mid-air conversion. Want to try it? And Amaro's like, Oh yeah, that sounds fun! Like, um, okay? How? <laughs> I mean, like, he's a real techie kid, so maybe you could justify that, oh, he's kind of working in the, in the vein of, oh, distracting himself with some sort of technical thing, but yeah, I could see how that would be, uh... <laughs> Whiplash. God, my neck hurts from that total whiplash. <laughs> and of course, um, what is it? Captain Bright, Commander Bright, or whatever, and just slaps everyone. Yeah. If there, if there is one, what one thing that I know for sure about uh, Gundam, it is the power of the bright slap. Yeah. <laughs> it turns boys into men. <laughs> Season five of uh, My Hero Academia. Yeah. I don't know who's scarier, the freaking Yandere blood sucker or the guy who could decompose shit with your hand. His hand. <laughs> what is it about? You know, honestly, this is just the anime version of Invincible. Yeah. No, no, it's got that sort of, it's bright and colorful, it's still got heroes doing hero stuff. And then you get those moments of 
Holy shit, what did I just watch? Maybe. Yeah, it, it's just one of those, like, I mean it, like, in a more tonal way, not ah, a, fair enough. you know, gratuitous violence. I mean, there still is some moments of fear of horror, but not on the level of invincible, obviously. But from a conical standpoint, yeah, let's say, kind of on par. I did like seeing anime uh, Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Yes. With the power of stress. Boy, that is... That's a boo. Been around since 2016. Come on, really been that long. Uh. This character is still gentle, gentle villain. <laughs> I, I I love that guy. <laughs> it's just... A gentle criminal. Give me perfect for like a, a villain in a tabletop game. Just somebody silly that you can enjoy. You know, at this point, I think I'm just gonna have to straight up look up a map for some of this stuff. Yeah, this is one of those things. This is one of those levels where you, you need a map or a guide. I don't think anybody is gonna like. Yeah, and I don't want to. You just constantly go through the same wandering around, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, it looks like I went through all of season five. Ugh. Now I gotta wait for season six. Damn it. I would say this level definitely fits and makes sense as like a final level kind of thing with just how big it is and how much you can try to uncover. Like, it, yeah, yeah, sure, it's still like 10 jiggies, you know, same as all the rest, but at the same time, like, because of just like how big and it is, how much you can traverse, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's like the biggest thing for me is always the verticality, where you're spending a lot of the level climbing, and you can and easily just be knocked off. Yeah. The yeah, only reason why I wanted to present it is because all the notes were would would say that's it. And I'm getting the feeling that like maybe if I had, like, grown up with this game, that would be, like, the kind of level that would be, like, oh, yeah, i go in and learn it inside and out. Figuring out yeah. what everything is. That, and you would probably have all the muscle memory of playing the game and get through it a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not calling it bad, it's just that... For these old school games, it's a lot harder to get into them when you've never experienced them as a kid. When you're a kid, you kind of have that muscle memory. Yeah. 
still instilled if you played it before. Yeah, and I, I have no illusions that I have needed to get good at this game. <laughs> I have uh, the rabbit hole of a particular game lore. Fortnite. What? Fortnite mm -hmm. has Fortnite lore. Oh hell yeah! We're not get. We're not talking about that. Uh, what? I mean, I, I, we I, already I, the, the, the stream is cringy enough. Let, 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 let's hear. It. Let's hear it. So, uh, the lore of Fortnite is actually surprisingly. It's it's pretty cool. Um. It's a I, bit I'm messed sorry, up, but it's... Did you just say cool in Fortnite in the same sentence? Bren, yeah, let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're basically at the crux of everything. The the whole... Uh, behind everything is a thing called the Zero Point. The, uh, the Fortnite Island takes place in a uh, location called Reality Zero. The Zero Point is the single point that every reality has come from. So basically, the Omniverse. It is the core of the Omniverse. And the way that it protects itself is by creating a loop. Basically, anyone that goes onto the island where it is uh, stored, uh, they get stuck in... It, I, it's kind of a time loop, kind of not a time loop, because every 22 minutes they reset. The storm closes in, resets everything. But they're not constantly replaying the same actions, so they're like... So that, that explains how why the, the battle royale is always happening. Because basically everyone gets stuck in the loop and everyone becomes... Their, their memories are wiped. They can no longer speak, and they basically just, uh, their aggression is kind of ramped up. So anyone trying to even get near the, uh, the zero point is basically going to get stuck in the loop and stuck in a constant battle. Uh, to escape the loop, you have to win the battle royale at which point you can get your memories back and you can start speaking and you know you escape the time loop but you're still stuck on the island the storm no longer affects you though so basically the island continues to progress but all the loopers that they're called continue to battle so <laughs> Uh, there is an organization that uh, actually is that uses the zero point to essentially they use its reality altering power to basically make their own things they to do what they want to do and then there's a group called the seven that is like you can't just keep using the zero point to do what you want it's you're gonna eventually mess things up and Guess where does the giant banana man fit in all this? Star Wars character. Okay, so Peely, uh, he's just from he's just from the multiverse, like one of the omniverse, like he just exists in a different. He's one of the he's people that gets trapped in. Yeah. He's just there. <laughs> and like so. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, and the all all of the crossover stuff is because this is like a. 
a, a point in the the multiverse, omniverse, whatever, where everything converges. I, I'm just being uh, yeah. Uh, yellow. Admittingly, I was kind of curious about the goddamn banana man. Yeah. Like, that that is one of the. I know. I mean, it's Fortnite, but the banana man is kind of the weirder parts of that, from my point of view. So there are some other interesting facts about this. Is that. <laughs> Uh, even if you win the Battle Royale and you escape Loop, a copy of you remains stuck in it, and this becomes a snapshot. This is... This is... Uh, this explains why there are multiple Jonesy. Okay. Because he was, he was an agent for the Imagined Order, so he basically was their, their best field agent, and he was constantly, like, testing out how the Loop works. So he has won it several times and made several copies of himself. Hey, I just saw um, a video of a capybara eating a watermelon. <laughs> nice. There, there are at least two characters that are in the loop that might not actually be affected by the memory loss of the loop they just in it for the fun of it and they seem to be uh harley quinn as in, and as huh? in batman harley quinn yes okay just and the in. other and the other one is the batman who laughs okay yeah i could totally see him doing that the batman who laughs is the intelligence of batman with the psychosis of the joker yeah it, it it kind of implies that if you are Joker levels of crazy, you might not be affected by the loot. <laughs> Although with Harley Quinn, her her being Joker's level of crazy is debatable. Depends on her. Uh, this is this is the fun. um this is the DC Cinematic Universe one where she has uh De Deadpool's uh four four breaking shenanigans. Ah, there we go, yeah. Okay, if Deadpool was in here, yeah, he'd totally be aware, yeah. I believe Deadpool is a character in... Look, it's for... Look, if there are two game franchises that have everybody, it's Smash Brothers and it's Fortnite, okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I so... just... And hopefully they never you know, crossed over, because I don't think the multiverse could handle that. Yeah. Uh... So, both, yeah, both DC and Marvel are part of the Fortnite lore. So, the DC one is, um... Basically, uh, a bunch of these, uh, portals started to open up in the DC universe that were connected to the island, um, and some of the villains uh, who may have actually been working with some of the actual Fortnite villains were like, Hey, we're gonna, we're gonna go grab this, uh, all-powerful thing called the Zero Point. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, that's how DC got involved in Batman, basically helped stop that. How Marvel got involved was Galactus was like, Huh. There's this really delicious looking power source in this one universe. I'm gonna go eat it. I'm a, don't eat it. I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> don't eat it. I'm gonna eat it. So yeah. <laughs> the the thing the thing has been cracked. It has been uh destroyed and repaired it's and it has been broken and then repaired so for, for something that is meant to be the the core like the single core at the center of the omniverse it's been damaged quite a bit <laughs> but it's like it's one of those things where it's like as long as it's not actually completely destroyed like it should be good Fortnite actually having decent enough lore and actually explains what's up with all the crossovers and the other stuff is... Okay. It's kind of on the level of how... The, 
the Marvel comics of Rom Space Knight on at first glance, it's like, oh, a comic series about a toy that I don't even look in. Holy crap, it's awesome. <laughs> like, and I still consider it cringy as all hell, but I will, I gotta tip my hat to Fortnite for at least trying to have an awesome story. I mean, what are, what about it is cringe? Dances, the, the yeah. personality around it, with a lot of the, you know, a lot of Fortnite YouTubers and other things. Yeah. Do you want to know what the secret is about that stuff, Bren? Yeah. In the words of Grandpa Simpson, I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with isn't it, and what's it seems weird and scary to me. And it'll happen <laughs> yeah. to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was once I immersed myself into the lore, I'm like, actually, I really respect it now. Because <laughs> the thing that really, like, Fortnite does what every other live service ga game fails to do, except for Guild Wars. And that is it actually being a live uh, ongoing story thing, where it's like, every week, there are changes, new things added, like, one of the, one of the big, uh, storylines, this, this, uh, purple cube just showed up, and then, it would start to roll, like, just start to move towards a certain po point in the map, and so people would track this over the days that it was moving, and, like, it was the same with, um... Like, basically, every... I think it's every four days, there is something that changes in the map. And, like, Guild Wars 2 does this with their living story. To an extent. They usually add new maps. They originally did it where they changed the core maps, but then realize that wouldn't work without them having to go back and make a lot of changes to the story. But they at least still continue to expand the world each uh, every like few months. And of course, Final Fantasy fourteen is probably the most famous. Like, hey, what's that red dot in the sky? Why is it getting bigger? Oh, that's the moon! Why is the moon falling? <laughs> hey, gum, oh, gum. Now, if that would have probably helped that it was in service to the fact that they were just like, fuck it, we need to reset the game. Yeah. And they had the good taste to be like, we should, we should draw the set. Make it a thing. Yeah. And I think what was cool about that is because they went through the, uh, the trouble of trying to get some of that stuff to work as it did, it offered the chance for some players to react and kind of build their own story to it. Like, I, I, I am still astounded how there's the, the thing of like, oh, the great Gubu defense, where a whole bunch of people mounted, mounted up on Gubus and as monsters were coming in and attacking the city and that got actually put into the official lore of what happened in uh, the backstory of A Realm Reborn. Yeah. And then of course uh, we also have the greatest, the greatest storyline to come from that, when one man decided that he was going to destroy uh, Dalamud himself by being launched into it. 
You know, by this point, I'm willing to accept that actually was canon. Yeah, remember, that's that's um, Hildebrand. I know that. I, that that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Everything Hilde, Hildebrand is absolutely canon. So yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, that reminds me, I'm gonna have to re-download 14 for Hildebrand tomorrow. Yes. And I shall be looking forward to us... ...doing the that. I'm glad we're finally getting that. I, I didn't think we were getting, gonna be getting Hildebrand for like at least another month. Yeah. I was just uh, getting some, um, buying some groceries online. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that, um, there's now, uh, these, um, Lotus bubble tea cans. Yeah. And the two that they have on offer, uh, is like, you know, brown sugar, bubble tea, or taro. I'm trying to remember what Taro is. Hmm. Oh, it's like... Yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's a root-like. I mean, yeah, it's a freaking... Almost potato-like thing. with the Japanese and their strange tastes. Yes. Those foreigners like, and their oh, yeah. foreign tastes. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, what I mean is more like, oh uh, yes, this very potato-like vegetable, let's turn it into a tea. Yeah. And all their other weird, uh, you yeah, know, I love like, for teas and other stuff. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's just the thing. They're, they're not... They're... It's a good thing, because they are not, um... You know, they're, they're not afraid to try different flavors. Yeah. But it's just it always... Some of them just do seem to come out of nowhere. I mean... You, you gotta think, the thing about tea is it's basically a way to make sure your water is potable. It, you're, yeah. And you're giving it some flavor, and it's like, you probably gotta figure, you, you, there's gotta be some guys who at some point will be like, Fuck it, let's see what happens when we boil this. Yeah. Ah, it doesn't taste too bad. Ha <laughs> ha 
Different, just eggs. Yeah, I figure I'll try to see how many more came out. Seventy one notes. See how much more I can get. Stop. Hmm? I almost started whistling again. <laughs> <laughs> Had to stop myself. The BGM calls to you. <laughs> it really does. I have I found new M and M's that I absolutely love. Hmm. Do tell. They are they are basically the brownie M and M's. Just normal M and M's with like little brownie pieces on the inside. Nice. Actually, sounds very nice. I'm gonna have to see if that's over at my local supermarket now. What are they like called? Like brown, at, like brownie M and M's. Yeah. M&M's chocolate brownie. Okay, so it's just there's nothing special about. Yep, them. it's uh, assume, assuming the bag colors are the same internationally, they are the purple bag with the um, with the uh M&M uh chick, kind of, I guess just brown M&M. It's like they just go by their colors if I oh I think so, yeah. Push for a uh, green M&M. They're like, because you know she's wearing high heels, and they're like, uh, they were changing it to give her sneakers or whatever. And people were like, let green M&M be sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is voice for three summers, and that's pretty sexy. Have you ever considered transforming Melina into an M&M? <laughs> the pink M&M, yes! Ha <laughs> 
I found that funny sometimes to hear the, the things about how different foods will be like marketed under different names or whatever across uh, different regions, yeah. or that just similar things will be like okay, there'll be things that will have things in common, but they will be uh, different. Like the the thing that comes to mind in particular for me is I remember finding it astounding to find out that um, okay, between the U.S. and the U.K., there is. There are two different candies called Smarties. Yeah. And how it's like in the U.S., it's this kind of dry, powdery disc thing that kind of tends to be somewhat of a fruit flavor, whereas, like, for the U.K., it's like, it's basically an M&M, &M, an, an M and M. With a little yeah, chocolate so, and candy shell. Yeah, I think that, like, because we get those Smarties here, and I think the big difference is that uh, they also eventually, to distinguish themselves, they tried to, like, flavor the Smarties, uh, shells. Huh. How did that turn out? Uh, pretty well, if I recall. Hmm. But then again, I can't even remember the last time I saw a packet of Smarties. <laughs> Hmm. Me neither, now that I think about it. I have not seen any in here. Huh. Like, I know when I think about it, I haven't seen, like, you know, a U.S. Smarties myself in a while. Like, I think it's kind of one of those things that's, like, it's kind of a traditional thing, but it's not, like, the most mainstream kind of candy. It's... It's Halloween candy. Yeah, like, it, it's something that, like, if you go to, like, a dedicated candy store, you would probably find it. But you're not gonna find it in, like, the checkout aisle or whatever. Exactly. Or you have to look in... It's like in a tucked-out corner in the candy aisle. Yeah. Wait, who... What... M&M's is, uh... Are uh, they, um, their own thing, or are they part of, uh... Aren't they part of Mars Bars? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think, yeah, it is owned by Mars Incorporated. You know what? I, I, I need to know this now. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. Alright. And I'm looking it up on Wikipedia. Yes, Mars Incorporated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that seems about right, because it's like... I know, like, Hershey's practically owns just about everything, but that it's like, no, no, no. The M&M's doesn't seem like a Hershey's thing, so, okay, I'm glad that... Yeah, like, Mars, right. they own Three Musketeers, Bounty, uh, Dove Bars, uh, yeah, they own some stuff, but a lot of things that I don't really... The uh, Snickers and Milky Way, that's why I'm their big thing. Yeah. And when, it, when it comes to... When it comes to mainstream chocolates in Australia, and, oh, like, I, Hershey's has been making a push, so I'll include them. I would say it goes like this. It goes, um... Probably Lint? Uh, or Lind? Oh, the... How do you want to pronounce it? They, they, they make the truffles, right? I, I might be thinking of something Yeah, else. I believe they do. They're also the ones behind Ferrero Share. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> no, I might... Oh. Yeah, no, I, I won't include... I won't include, um... Uh, freaking... Uh... Kinder because they they do the the dual chocolate that's kind of their mainstay so I'm just like purely on the milk chocolate front um I would say yeah Lind Cadbury Nestle and then Hershey Hershey is pretty shit. Uh, I mean, after I started trying other chocolates, yeah, I learned 
here. The only thing, the only thing I have found Hershey chocolates for is making some more. And that's only out of tradition. I, like, I don't have much Hershey stuff myself anymore, but I still love them for uh, having the whatchamacallits and who's he what's it's. <laughs> but I had to remind myself that they're actual names. Yes! <laughs> I know, right? I know. Just, just, just imagine a, flaming disc a flashing disclaimer on, on screen. Yes, these are actual candy names. Yeah, I am trying to... Uh, ...pay my horizon a little bit. I also like to get a uh, fancy bottled soda. Ooh, look at you, you Mr. Know, like, fancy. Yeah, I mean like uh, retro bottled sodas. There's like a company that yeah, makes the old style stuff. It's nice to try them. Only the finest sugar water for my tastes. Exactly. <laughs> And I, I, I do say, like, as much as I'm kind of joking around, I, I do enjoy myself a nice craft soda. Like, there's this party store nearby that sells this, uh, honestly, I think it's probably one of my more favorite door orange cream so sodas. <laughs> well, unfortunately for me, I'm starting to... So, yeah, yeah, my meds are starting to kick in. I'm, I'm probably going to be heading up to my mom soon. Uh, are you going to talk to her about putting your nan in the home yet? <laughs> Can't. Or, like I asked, either put her in the home or just give her a knife and have her die with dignity out in the Australian wilderness. Yeah, no, that, that ain't happening. Oh, come on, don't you want to see your dad fight a kangaroo? Not gonna find them around here. What? I thought it's like moose in Alaska. You just look out in your backyard, look, there's a kangaroo right there. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I'm joking. I, I know, I know, I know. I mean, it's not really a joke, but yeah, actually in Alaska, that was a thing that happened to me. When I was a kid, uh, fair enough. When, I, when I used to live in like Anchorage, uh, you know, I woke up one morning because my mom was shaking. It's like, bro, look, and then out in our backyard, there was a goddamn moose eating our tree. <laughs> like, yeah, but that is a surprisingly common occurrence in Alaska. Although I think the most annoying question I ever got growing up when I went moved to Idaho is whenever I say I'm from Alaska and people would ask, Oh, did that mean you lived in an igloo? I'm like, really? Yeah, did you? No! <laughs> Have you heard of an angle of a window? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You, 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 you know, pick, pick out a hole, put some glass in. Yeah. I don't think you actually can put a window in an angle. Yeah, I mean that that probably would like get in the way of the whole insulation thing, but. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, it, it was nice chatting with you, and, uh, hope y'all, this is a good stream. Have a good evening. Yeah. Yeah. See you, man. Yeah. I'm probably gonna stop in about 25 minutes myself, gonna see how many notes I can get, and call that yeah, good. Fair enough.
<laughs> Bloody... I have come up with this idea that I want to see it would be an anime. Have you ever heard of the uh, Isekai Quartet? Yes. So, take the premise of the Isekai Quartet, but make it like a Isekai Kawaii. You have Kana, you have Anya, uh, can't think of, uh, like, I uh, can't remember her name, uh, Rongo from, um, bloody Non Non Biori. Just basically get a bunch of cute lowly characters from different anime and just have them do slice of life shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch that. Oh, well, yeah, a, a ka kawaii quartet, not isekai kawaii. <laughs> isekai kawaii also works, because they would be isekai, but... <laughs> I, I think I was, yeah, the, the, I like, yeah, kawaii quartet. Mm. They're both really interesting names, like, uh, fun names. Hmm. But... Kawaii quartet yeah, at least has like... the consistent, uh... Yeah. Yeah. I just... Freaking... Anya learning that, uh, that, uh, Kana is a dragon just by reading her mind. <laughs> just, uh... All sorts of shenanigans. So that I I, I I could see it being the case. Ka Ka Kana winds up being responsible for carrying them to all sorts of uh, uh, situations. Um, I'm kind of imagining there there's a bit of a running subplot in that. Uh, who 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 whomever is the small girl's uh, designated. Uh, adult has to deal with tracking them down or getting them out of things. <laughs> the, pro the problem is, it's like... Okay, R Rongo is... She is adorable, but she is absolutely mundane compared to Kana and Anya. Hmm. She's so... I guess you know you need you kind of need that that normalcy to balance out the supernatural. Mm -hmm. it's like who would the the fourth be? You know what? Actually, I think I know who the fourth could be. It'd be... It would be, uh, buddy... Uh, Mini Baccarina, before she goes to the Academy. That would be cute. <laughs> She shows off her extraordinary capability of Earth Bump! Yes! Because <laughs> she, she is that perfect blend where it's like, yeah, her magic's not that, uh, good. Huh. <laughs> <sighs> And you could even have it where it's like, like maybe like, you know, one episode they're in the the spy by family world. Next episode they're in Dragon Maid. Just you know, because it's like they're they're having play dates at each other's houses. <laughs> yes. So that way they can interact with the other characters. And probably traumatize Anya when 
she she accidentally reads um uh freaking Toru's mind. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, n n now I find myself thinking, if somehow there is some allowance of the adults, um, I'm just thinking with how, um, they, they, they go into the, the world of my next life as a villainous. There's, there's the whole thing about, um, Jordo is afraid of snakes. And I'm just thinking what would happen if Lukoa showed up in her full dragon form. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and of course, um, you know, Sh Shota is a honorary fifth member. Mm -hmm. Of course, he just he gets traumatized by Lukoa. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just between Barina and uh, Kana, you could have like a whole segment of them just eating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Anya, yeah, of course, if she's got the peanuts. Mm -hmm. uh... I'm thinking when, when 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 they're at Anya's house, they have to deal with um the the paranoia of um Twilight trying to figure out what the girl's <laughs> deal is, where they came from. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, okay, what is it? Range, I believe it is her name. Rang... I have not seen freaking non non Bior in a long time. Uh, Range. Well, you might have heard the song that she sings. But yeah, let's see. I think the, the thing that first introduced me to non non Bior was a clip I saw of uh, someone doing the, um, the thumb the thumb separation magic trick and it completely traumatized her yeah oh, okay i was having a little bit of trouble remembering that uh, one exactly but yeah yeah i remember that one yeah awesome <laughs> God, not just the thought of that with her reacting to Kana and turning into a dragon would be something. And yeah, there is like there is a song that she she sings uh, that's been remixed, but the song is basically about like 
they're they're expo like they're looking for someone in the woods at night and like you know they're getting exhausted so like hey you should sing a song to keep your energy up and the song she sings is basically about a guy that finds out his uh like his girlfriend or his wife has been cheating on him so he goes out into the woods to commit suicide oh my god <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's a, it's cute and adorable because you sing it until you realize the lyrics. Man, okay, this guy. This guy's writing a um, writing a short story for me, and he just sent me the first draft today. And uh, they are very um. I they like they constantly just asking like, oh, so like. I'm I'm worried that you might not like it. What do you think of it? I'm like I, I'll read it later. I'm I'm busy at the moment. And then like an hour later, it's like I, are you alright? I just ain't going on. I, I, I said I'm I'm busy at the moment. And then they just they're really panicking. I don't know why. I mean, they they, they might be just kind of like the anxious sort of person who's like, oh shit, is it the, this bad or you? Know, Yeah. They, 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 they might be real anxious to make sure they're doing it right. It's...
Ooh, the Capcom bundle. I mean, hmm. I kind of. Mm -hmm. I do want the uh, I do want the Devil May Cry series. So like, you can get the Devil May Cry trilogy and Devil May Cry Five for basically twenty bucks. That sounds like a good deal. Let's see what else. We get. Uh, I guess D DMC I don't really care about too much, but you know, that's part of the bundle. Uh, Dragon's Dogma I've already got, Street Fighter V I've already got. Really, all I would be buying it for would be Devil May Cry 5 and the HD collection. But, like, I guess 27 bucks for those two alone. Yeah, because, like, is... like, I would imagine one of those games would probably go for, like, 20 or 30 on their own, so... Yeah. Oh, actually, you can... Okay, you can get the seven... The seven item... Oh, wait, no. The seven item bundle doesn't have... Uh, DMC5. And the Monster Hunter Rise 50% off coupon, I mean, I've already got that, but I could... I don't know who else I would give that to, unless that could also include Sunbreak, but I doubt it. Yeah, unless they specifically say it does, I doubt it. Yeah. Alright, when does Sunbreak come out? Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Nintendo Direct is on the 15th. Ooh! Looking forward to that? A freaking A content creator, apparently a reviewer, has tanked his career over it. H how? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, basically, he got a uh, review code for a game that is uh, launching the day of the. Uh, it's a one of those shadow drops that launches the day of the uh, of the um, direct. Mm -hmm. And he basically said, "It's like they." They, they didn't say, they didn't tell me about, uh, uh, you know, they didn't mention anything about NDA, so, he's like, it's all, it's all fair game. I'm like, no, like, okay, yeah, sure, legally they didn't mention anything about fair game, like, about NDA, but, like, They're not you know, gonna like that. <laughs> it's like, you, you think common sense. But then, yeah, people were like, okay, so you basically broke review embargo on uh, one particular game. That doesn't really mean anything about, like, the Nintendo Direct. 
And then he said, oh, well, I've got a bunch of NDAs for other games on the uh, Nintendo Direct. And people were just like, you kidding me? You... Uh, it's like, you can't even... Just mentioning that you've got like an NDA on a bunch of stuff on the Nintendo Direct is like, just... Yeah... Yeah, Nintendo ain't ever dealing with him ever again, that's for sure. <laughs> yep. And somehow that's a thing I can just see his his reaction is shocked Pikachu face. <laughs> yes. Like he even specifically uh like his evidence was um like an actual developer email uh, and he he very poorly blacked out the specifics and then people went in and were just like you know we can easily just change like the freaking um uh like the gamma and we can actually reveal you you covered it so poorly we can read what you're covering up oh god Yeah, okay, that's like... I can't imagine anything being worth that kind of breach. I'm a call good. Yeah. go through with this since going into end game. Yeah. I think the only I think the only door you won't be able to open if you don't get all the notes is um I think there's supposed to be a door that has some cheats behind it. Which makes sense that they would have had a cheap thing behind that. Uh, I still... I still need to have this... Uh, done with Melina.
I'm just not sure what would be the better route. Going straight, uh, basically, Gruntilda, or going the more Klungo style, like what happens with... Clung, well, I guess, yeah, like, yeah. Typical witch, or more like what happens to Tootie? Hmm. Man, that was a lot cheesier than I remember it being. <laughs> yes, but it it launched uh, many uh... an interest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Like, you know, that, that'd be a great, like, they do a, a new Banjo-Kazooie game where it's a, a what-if scenario where it takes place after Banjo lost. So you got sexy, uh, Gruntilda. And maybe it's like an adventure of, uh, Banjo and, Banjo and Kazooie trying to find a way to restore duty. That could be something, yeah. I still, that is one of my favorite things that, like, um, a deve game developer has done with um, uh, XCOM. It's like, you guys sucked so bad that we're making the uh, we're making the sequel based on losing the first game. <laughs> <laughs> and that... It, it is interesting when that stuff is done. Like, I remember finding it funny to hear about how, like, um... Like, basically, Nier is based on what was meant to be a joke ending from the, uh, Drakengard games. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Well, gonna call that good for now. Yeah, thank you for hanging out. No worries. Yeah. And. Farewell to viewers. Goodbye.